everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving into an important topic that every truck driver should know about, lease agreements. If you're ever planning to lease onto a carrier, this is for you. First off, let's congratulate all the drivers out there who excel at driving but might need a bit of help with the business side of things. You're not alone. Many drivers find it tricky to navigate the complexities of lease agreements, but don't worry, we're here to help. Today's focus is on lease agreements, particularly the written lease requirements you need to watch out for. Imagine this, you're about to lease onto a carrier and are handed a contract. What should you be looking for? The first thing to understand is who's who in the contract. The lease should clearly define the roles. The lessor is the motor carrier and the lessee is usually you, the truck owner. If the contract uses different terms like owner, operator, or company, make sure you know who's who. Next up is the duration of the lease. The contract should specify how long it lasts. Many contracts auto renew yearly, but pay special attention to the termination clauses. Do you need to give a 30-day notice? Are there any fees if you want to break the lease early? Some contracts have hidden catches, like requiring you to repay a hiring bonus if you leave early. Always check these details. Another key section is about exclusive possession and responsibility. This means once you lease your truck to a carrier, they have complete control over it. They may even have the right to put another driver in your truck if you're not available to fulfill a load. This part doesn't change whether you're an employee or an independent contractor, but it does mean the carrier has control. Now, on to the money talk, compensation. Make sure your contract clearly states how you'll get paid. Is it per mile, a percentage of the load, or an hourly rate? Also, look for additional charges or reimbursements for things like fuel surcharge, tarping, deadhead miles, and detention time. If these aren't specified in the contract, it's tough to fight for them later on. Regarding payment periods, you should be paid within 15 days of submitting the necessary documents to your carrier. These documents usually include your logbooks and the bill of lading. If a carrier tells you that you'll get paid when they get paid, that's a red flag. You deserve timely payment. Lastly, always check who's responsible for what. The contract should specify who handles fuel, fuel taxes, permits, tolls, and other expenses. This detail helps avoid surprises down the road. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or need more help understanding these regulations, reach out to fmcsaregistration.com the number one online service provider for the transportation industry. We assist motor carriers, truck drivers, and brokers across the U.S. with FMCSA registration compliance. Please call 866-477-0707 or visit us at fmcsaregistration.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more useful tips. Remember, we have lots of videos explaining all kinds of things, so subscribe or watch other videos on our channels. There are over 500 of them. Thank you.